Hello everybody. Not too long ago, the team on the Grand Tour had an episode reminiscing about Fords. In that episode, they said that the only car that Clarkson, Hammond and May had ever agreed upon was the Ford Mondeo ST200. However, I distinctly remember that there was another vehicle that they all agreed upon in a positive light. That was this, the Renault Avantime. Now the French have a long and storied history of creating unusual, weird and downright quirky cars. However, the Avantime is pretty up there in terms of some of the more unusual stuff ever to come out of our French friends. I feel like the Avantime is the result of a meeting that the French must have had. Soon after creating the Espace, they must have all got together and gone, great lads, we have revolutionized transport for the new parent segment. What's next? Should we do another people carrier? Should we do an SUV? Should we do a sporty coupe? And they all decided, yes, let's do all of those things, but in one car. And so you have this, the Avon team, a three door, pillarless coupe, allegedly sporty SUV people carrier thing. Bit odd. If you don't know what the Avon team is, I completely forgive you because they produced only just over 8,000 across two years, of which some 450 came to the United Kingdom. You could even buy one of these with a V6 in it. This one is instead powered by the curiously named F4RT four-cylinder inline turbo engine, which is the same sort of thing you'd find in a Megane and various other Renault products of the time. It's mated, most surprisingly, to a six-speed manual gearbox. Most of the V6s, of course, went with an automatic, and it is as weird a car as you would expect it to be. Now, I get spoiled a lot and I spend a lot of time driving around in nice, low-slung, sporty things. In fact, this very morning, I've been driving a Porsche 968 Club Sport. And getting to this, I feel like I'm Mr. Bean, sat on top of his car in a sofa. Very odd. But it's a very comfortable car, as a family car should be. Now, this one isn't entirely as original because it would have had a black part fabric, part leather interior, which has been replaced by a subsequent owner with this less than immaculate leather item from a V6, I suspect. However, as Lewis, this car's kind owner who's come to me with only a moment's notice, uses it for all sorts of things, including taking the kids about, he doesn't really see a need to make it immaculate and show ready just yet and I agree with him on that one. To drive it's actually rather pleasant. I had to chuckle when I started it because it's actually very quiet and subdued. And for that reason I've not bothered putting an exhaust cam on this one because there's nothing to hear. Believe me when I say that that F4RT engine really does live up to its name. You put a fruity exhaust on it and um, it doesn't sound that good. But going fast is not at all what the Avon team is about. The Avon team is about doing things a little bit differently, a little bit French. And in that regard, it works really well. Now it's got no fewer than two sunroofs, one of which completely opens, and the one in the rear then has a little blind that can be retracted. Annoyingly, the blind in the back can only be operated manually, whereas this one up front is fully electric. That's a bit of an oversight, that, because when you've got kids in the back with short kid-like arms, they can't really reach the sunroof, whereas the occupants in the front, presumably, can. So, seems a bit odd on Renault's part, but hey-ho. You actually have some electric adjustment on this front seat. It's also heated as well, I believe. And there are some amazing bits of engineering in this car. I mean, the pillarless coupe thing for a star is ridiculous to be able to pull off in a vehicle of this size and type. It's absolutely spectacular to look at. And there are some really odd bits of design about it. It's got the same sort of boot that was introduced on the Megane of the same time period. So it sort of juts out like a big bum. And if you remove the boot floor, which has happened in this one, or the covering on it, it's actually got a reasonable amount of space in it too. The back seats can fold completely flat and you'll have a level loading area in the back too, meaning that you can use this as well like a van. The most impressive bit of engineering is this door, which has this incredible double hinged mechanism where some of the door card doesn't stay with the rest of it. I mean, the amount of time and effort that must have gone into developing that is 
absolutely crazy. I, I think it's a not necessarily a pretty car, but it's definitely a distinctive one. And it's all right. <laughs> it's it's no 968 Club Sport, you know. In other news, water wet, Sahara Desert very warm, America full of Americans. But actually, it's comfortable. The gearbox is pretty nice to use by French standards. Pretty wallowy as you'd expect it to be, of course. Steering's not too bad actually. Uh, the engine's struggling a little bit, although. It hasn't done many miles recently, this car, so it may have some pretty old fuel in it, but Lewis is perfectly right. Speed is not what the Avon team experience is all about. The Avon team experience is the fact that for the first time I've driven this road, I can actually see and appreciate the stunning scenery over there. It's really wonderful. And I've got this most commanding view. There is glazing all over the place in this car. It's fantastic. I, I do get why people like higher cars, and taller cars I mean, not just, you know, ones that you don't own. So many of them are utterly and totally pointless. They're just no better or more practical or useful than a small vehicle. This though is genuine out-the-box thinking with someone going, you know what, how can we make a bigger car but make it better and do something a little bit different? This is the kind of engineering we need to see more from the French. Come on, old girl, you can do it. Apparently there is a very dedicated and enthusiastic owners club behind these vehicles and I can completely see why. They're, they're fascinating, fabulous things. Not quick, but then I guess you get the V6 for that. What is that? A little triumph. Through the water splash. I can imagine kids in the back would love this because they've got such a great view out and I can place it pretty easily. I mean, it's a big old bus. Actually, I say that, if you compare it against, say, a modern 4x4, really isn't that big at all. Now, if you were that way inclined, you could do some silly things with one of these because it uses essentially the same engine as a Megane of the time. You could indeed stuff in a Renault Sport Megane lump, which at least one person has apparently done. It's pretty clean in here too, you know, even the stereo's hidden away, there's not a lot of stuff about and it does feel like they were trying to make a somewhat premium product. These were not cheap when they came out either, being sort of 25 to 27 grand, depending on which model you wanted. And that was a lot of money for something really quite bizarre. They weren't actually built by Renault. They were in fact built by Matra. Yes, that Matra, who had previously been building the Espas, but Renault decided they wanted to build the Espas themselves. And so Matra were handed this as a sort of consolation prize. And unsurprisingly, Matra I don't think were too happy about that because with nobody ordering one, Matra didn't really have a lot of business. So this was in production for two very short years and it was done fewer than 9,000 ever made and I guess it's probably another vehicle that made the French just that little bit more cautious. Such was the financial impact of the Aventine's failure on Matra that the entire company actually went bust as a result of it. Apparently a lot of Aventine owners and fans are real Matra lovers and so a few of these are out and about wearing Matra badging as opposed to Renault, which I think is quite curious. But I have to say I had no idea what to expect from the Avon team, and as this is a review that I booked with only a couple of hours notice, I didn't do all that much research on it either. This car's owner is a man off my own heart because he hates owning vehicles that other people might have. And so I guess, in a way, he's lucky that the Avon team was a total disaster because it's actually, I think, quite a decent, fun car. There's not the most room in the back, so it's not the bestest car ever for big families or tall families, but as a thing to enjoy and drive about in, and for a road like this, the Avon team is a, a wonderful place to be. An entirely different experience, but in some ways no less enjoyable than the classics and sports cars that I've been hooning about here the rest of the month. There you have it. We always like a bit of variety here on the channel, and I think you'll agree. This car, it's pretty unusual. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment below, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you all for the next one. Bye-bye.